is to try to point of order. sniff arm us. Christia Freeland has been asking for order. this, who point wanted order. this study point to of order, take Mr. place. Chair. Simply wrong. And I would ask my colleague to, to be factual. He can talk about the last two and a half years having a confidence supply agreement. There was no nine years of coalition government between the Liberal NDPs in the last nine years. Thank and you, Chair. Um, thank you to my uh, colleague, Mr. Giovanni, for his very eloquent uh, Switch and a speech and recap of, of today's reality of what Canadians are facing after nine years of the civil NDP government. Um, I think it's important because other, other colleagues uh, have tried to recap how we got here today. So I think it's important that we, uh, we really find out why we are where we are today. Let's not forget we did all as a committee try to get Mark Carney here to this, uh, to this committee. It was actually Mr. Davies who blocked that um, proposal uh, with support or whatever deal he broke with the Liberals. Uh, we we're just not sure yet, but whatever it was, it worked. Uh, Mr. Davies was the first to jump on that. Um, so he, he's, he tried to block that. It was, he was successful in that. Um, and then let's turn to why we are where we are today. This was the first time in my entire parliamentary uh, experience where I'd seen a a parliamentary secretary from the government, so Mr. Turnbull, blocked the government's own legislation on Bill C-69. Let's not forget we had witnesses in this room and Mr. Turnbull decided to table drop a motion, a heavy-handed motion, which was not discussed beforehand, but we know for a fact that NDP got that motion the night before, which none of us, none of the rest of us got in this room. Uh, from the conservative side or the bloc, as far as we know. But Mr. Davies knew about it. And they tried to use a heavy hand, as they always do, within what they've been doing for the last nine years with their costly coalition, is to try to Point of order. sniff arm us. I tried this last Friday, but got an incredibly biased decision from the chair at that time. There is no coalition for nine years. Uh, you're allowed to have great latitude to this committee, but you're not allowed to rewrite history. Saying that the last nine years of coalition government is like saying the last nine years was a American Republican government. It's simply wrong. And I would ask my colleague to, to be factual. He can talk about the last two and a half years having a confidence supply agreement. There was no nine years of coalition government between the Liberal NDPs in the last nine years. And you're not allowed to state outright falsehoods uh, under the guise of parliamentary privilege. I'd ask him to uh, to withdraw that comment and, and stick to the truth. On that point of order? Be Chair, Allen. I, I think, uh, Davies, yeah. I think my NDP colleague Don Davies needs to listen a little bit better just because I was, I separated the two, the two, uh, the two things and in the ruling which was uh, that, you know, our uh, clerk, uh, hardworking clerk, cleared up for us was that there was a ruling made that we are, it is very factual to say Liberal NDP government. There was a ruling made in the House, um, and Chair, you're more than welcome to have that same email forwarded to you, um, that there was a ruling made in the House of Commons um, on May the 7th, 2024, where they pointed to a ruling from September 24th, 2021. In regards to the same point of order that Mr. Davies brought up about uh, not being able to say Liberal NDP government, which has proven that we can. So I would just uh, revert him and yourself, Chair, to that ruling. So um, I'll... I can, that, thank you for that, MP Allen and MP Davies. I will put that to the side, but I will, I will look into it and what, what, you, what you have said here uh, on the record. Yeah. So, continuing on... Um, this costly coalition, Liberal NDP government, which I am allowed to say, um, blocked their own legislation. Let's not forget when those witnesses were here, we were hearing testimony. Mr. Turnbull, the parliamentary secretary, for the first time in the history that I've been here, table dropped a motion to block it, block their own legislation on C-69. What would Christia Freeland think about that? Is it because maybe Mr. Turnbull supports Mark Carney in his bid to become Liberal leader? He did recently tweet him, which could be an endorsement. We don't know. And maybe out of that, maybe try to trick Christia Freeland. We just don't know. 
that's why I think it's important for Mark Carney to be here and for, Mar and for Christia Freeland to be here at the same time. But let's not forget that it was the NDP and, and Mr. Turnbull who Don Davies and, and Ryan Turnbull came here at the same time. It seems like they're, they had an agenda already preset before they got here and have been trying to stiff arm and heavy hands since Point of they order. got here. Mr. Chair, well, what does my honorable colleague mean, came here at the same time? I'd like to explain that. Uh, I, I mean, let, let me clarify. It means around the same time joined this committee. And so in our experience, we've seen nothing but blocking of their own legislation um, and other heavy-handed things that, uh, of course, uh, as the official opposition, on behalf of Canadians, we won't let happen in this committee. Um, I wanted to address uh, things that uh, my colleague, Ms. Zerowitz, brought up because I think it's very, very important, and these are some important issues that Canadians and Canadian businesses are facing as well. When we talk about Canadian businesses in this, in this expensive costly photo op budget by this Liberal NDP government. They're claiming that they're going to give back uh, carbon tax rebates to businesses. These businesses have been waiting for more than five years for this. More than five years. They took this money, emissions went up on this, under this pretense that somehow it would fix the environment, which it didn't. Christia Freeland said that uh, businesses would somehow be better off and the environment would be better off, Canadians would be better off. None of those things happen. Not a single one of those things happen. In fact, Christia Freeland's own environmental department admitted they don't even keep track of the emissions that are tied in with the carbon tax scam. So it's a total scam. There is nothing that ties in both things because they know it's just like Justin Trudeau and not worth the cost. That's why. That's why they don't keep track of it. They take more and more from Canadians and now supposedly they're supposed to be the heroes of small businesses who have suffered with higher taxes, labor shortages, and all sorts of, of pain that they inflicted on not just the business owners, but the, but the workers of, 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 uh, of those businesses as well. And so I wanted to address that, that... A, what a common sense conservative government would do is not take the money in the first place. You wouldn't need these phony rebates if you didn't take the money away in the first place. Christia Freeland has on multiple occasions come to this committee, just like the parliamentary budgeting officer, and has refused to answer what the parliamentary budget of, budgeting officer has confirmed on multiple occasions, that most households are worse off when you, when you factor in the economic and physical impacts of the carbon tax. That is exactly what the Parliamentary Budgeting Officer said. So when you have Christia, Christia Freeland brag day in and day out with the falsehood that somehow this carbon tax is supposed to make life better for Canadians, it's false. The Parliamentary Budgeting Officer said so himself. He proved that this carbon tax scam is not worth the cost. And emissions went up once again. In fact, it's so bad that Canada's ranking for climate change index fell from 58 to 62. Can you believe that? But the carbon tax went up. Can you believe that? It's crazy, I know, Chair. It's crazy that you could raise the carbon tax and fall in the climate tax, <laughs> climate change index. Would you believe that? That is the record of nine years of this government, of their failed policies. But what did that do? Where Christia Freeland would tell you that Canadians have never had it so good? Well, this carbon tax scam is responsible for two million Canadians going into a food bank in a single month. And a million more projected to this year. There are families making decisions that they've never had to make before. There's moms who go to the grocery store who spend double the time because they have to pick up food and think twice whether they can afford this or not, where they're having to skip meals. Can you believe that? Canadians are having to skip meals in this country. My family came here as immigrants, like many others. There's many people who grew up here, all saying the same thing. This is not the same Canada that we knew. 
Because after nine years of this government, Canada is broken. Despite what the Liberals might try to sell you, it's just like their carbon tax scam. It's just a scam. In fact, 400,000 people left this country last year because of the high cost of living as being one of their number one reason. That never used to happen before. It's the stuff that we never heard before. But after nine years of this government, that's the reality of Canadians today. Canada used to be somewhere where, where people wanted to come here, they could afford a home, they could run a good business, safe streets, they can send their kids to school, walk alone to school. None of those things are possible anymore after nine years of this government. This is, this is the Canada that Christia Freeland is bragging about after nine years that Canadians have never had it so good. You don't have to look very far. You just have to go to some of our, the streets of our, of our bigger cities to see the crime, chaos, destruction, and what high-cost, high-deficit governments do to their, to, to their citizens. Can you believe that we live in a country right now after nine years where there's teachers and nurses living in their cars because after nine years of this government, supported by the NDP, they can't afford rent because it's doubled. Mortgages have doubled. In fact, Canadians can't renew their mortgages because, because of the high, co uh, the high in interest rates. That's the Canada we live in. And when we talk about food banks, there's phenomenons that we've never seen before. Double income earning family members, two in fact sometimes, that earn good living, they can't afford to eat, heat, or house themselves anymore. That wasn't the promise of Canada. That wasn't the Canadian dream that was promised to those people that came here, that left everything behind, to come here for a better future. They were promised that they could afford groceries, to heat their homes, to be able to afford to live in a home, all at the same time. But after nine years of this government, supported by the NDP, all along the way, this is the reality of Canada. The Canadian dream is broken. The Canadian dream has turned into a nightmare for many people that we talk to. I think that if the Liberals and the NDP would start talking to their constituents, they would realize the pain that it causes. Mr. Giovanni clearly outlined what was happening in Mr. Turnbull's own writing, that this wasn't a reality before, but it is now. Yet, virtue signaling and being woke is more important to this Liberal NDP government than actually helping out Canadians. And this budget... This $40 billion of new inflationary net spending does nothing to help Canadians out. In fact, everyone has seen high interest rates. The governor of the Bank of Canada has been here multiple times and talked about higher rates for longer, and, the, and that, that's the pain that Canadians have to feel. And when asked, he says... This government's fiscal policy and his monetary policy are rowing in opposite directions. And it is a factor in why interest rates can't come down. That's why when people are renewing their mortgages, sometimes they're renewing at double or triple the rate. That's why Canadians are now living in their cars, living under bridges and in tents. There's tent cities all across this country like we've never seen before. That's just nine years of of how broken Canada is under this Prime Minister with the help of the NDP. By the way, that keeps this Prime Minister in his place out of greed for their leader's pension. That's what this is all about. And this budget is no different. It's going to keep this Prime Minister in longer, causing more pain for Canadians. Canadians don't see a hope right now at all. A year and a half is a long way for an election. That's why our leader called for a carbon tax election. That if the Silver NDP government is so sure of their, of their carbon tax scam, why not pause it? Which, by the way, 70% of Canadians before April the 1st, before the Silver NDP government jacked it up by 23%, 70% of Canadians, including 7 out of 10 premiers, said, spike the hike, do not raise the carbon tax. Yet, they did what they always do. They want to inflict as much pain on Canadians as possible to raise the price of groceries, gas, and home heating even more. So they refused to listen to Canadians and jacked it up. Knowing that a million more Canadians would visit a food bank on top of the two million that visit a food bank in a single month, despite all of that. 
So when they talk about fairness, Canadians clearly see that that's not what they're talking about. It might be fairness for the government to collect more from Canadians, but for everyday Canadians, there is no fairness whatsoever. My colleague, Ms. Zerowitz, also brought up money laundering. I, I'm, I'm, I'm appalled that she would even bring that up after last week when Conservatives with, uh, with our, our Bloc colleague forced a meeting last Friday on money laundering. And once again, the Liberals, along with Don Davies from the NDP, chose to block that very important motion brought by my good friend and great colleague, Adam Chambers. We could have been studying this money laundering issue. It's massive. In fact, it's so big and so important that Christia Freeland, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, wrote to this committee, to you, Chair, on October 6, 2023, where she says, Dear Mr. Fonseca, I am writing to request your assistance with the fourth five-year parliamentary review of the Proceeds of Crime, Money Laundering, and Terrorist Financing Act, or PCML-TFA. This letter goes on to say that the last review of the PCML-TFA was completed in November of 2018. And so this review takes place every five years. It's, it's already over what it needs to be. She literally... Maybe she was just doing this out of formality, but we take that seriously because not only have there now there's been three different banks that have been allegedly caught up in in money laundering. The most recent was TD. TD Bank, and this was the reason why we wanted to call that meeting, which was blocked once again by Mr. Davies and Mr. Turnbull and, and his uh, crew of liberals, uh, there was a headline that says TD Bank could face more severe penalties after drug money laundering allegations, says analyst. Bank could face worst case scenario after report connects TD to illicit fentanyl profits. TD probe tied to laundering drug money, says Wall Street Journal. Court documents and sources reveal investigators found evidence of a drug money laundering operation. TD Bank hit with $9.2 million penalty for failing to report suspicious transactions. Canada's Financial Intelligence Agency finds TD as bank faces further compliance probes in the U.S. So my question is, what do these Liberals and Mr. Davies have to hide? Why did they block a common-sense conservative motion from going through? In fact, it's a very good motion. I'll, I'll read it in. It's, it's from my friend, Mr. Chambers, from Tuesday, March 19th, 2024, that says, Pursuant to Standing Order 1082, and with regards to Section 72 of the Proceeds of Crime, Money Laundering, and Terrorist Financing Act, the committee undertake a study to review the act and the current situation regarding money laundering and terrorist financing in Canada. That, as a part of the study, the committee calls the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance for no fewer than two hours, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada no fewer than two hours, the Minister of Public Safety no fewer than two hours, the Minister of National Revenue no fewer than two hours, Department officials for the Departments of Justice and Public Safety, the Royal Ca Canadian Mounted Police, the Financial Transactions and Reports Analysis Center of Canada, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, the Canadian Border Service Security Agency, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada, the Ombudsman for Banking Services and Investments, the Cullen Commission-led Council, Royal Bank of Canada, TD Bank, Bank of Montreal, Scotia Bank, CIBC, National Bank, the Ontario Securities Commission, and other witnesses, as submitted by the members of the committee, that the committee take no fewer than 10 meetings for this study and that it reports its finding to the House. So what I, what I don't understand was why, even though the Minister of Finance, Christia Freeland, has been asking for this... Point of order. Thompson? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wonder if you could clarify, uh, Mr. Hallen said that he wasn't passing this motion. I believe he uh, indicated that he's reading a motion. Um, but I, I would like absolute clarity on what's happening. Um, is he indeed trying to move um, this motion or uh, is it just another example of uh, speaking for hours? Mp. Thompson, uh, Mp. Hallen will clarify what he, what he's doing, but yeah. also just on again, we are speaking to Mp. Morantz's uh, sub amendment. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Miss um, uh, Thompson was at Friday's committee where her and the Liberals with Don Davies decided to block the motion. So, as what was done on Friday, I'm simply reading into the record a motion by my friend. Adam Chambers, there was no mention of moving it. There was no mention of putting it on notice. It's on notice already. In fact, Mr. Chambers has already read it into the record once, and so I was just doing that again because Christia Freeland, the Minister of Finance, she's the one who requested this. In fact, she's the one who point, wanted order, this study to order, take Mr. place. Chair. Yeah, the, the, <clears throat> the, the way Chair, this... Um, he's talking about a motion that's not being debated. So that has nothing to do. Yeah, if there's gonna, a point of order, MP Angus. To... I've got I've got MP Davies, please. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Mr. Angus is my substitute, so maybe I'll make oh, my last it? point and then I'll 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 turn over to Mr. Angus. Um, what happened on Friday was because we were debating a sub amendment. There are no motions that are permitted to be moved when we're debating a sub amendment, and so what happened was. Um, the the conservative, I think it was Mr. Chambers, I'm not sure who it was, but I think it was Mr. Chambers, said that, no, he wasn't moving the motion. He was reading into the record. So it's already been read into the record. So I'd ask you, Mr. Chair, to rule on, um, you know, that there were some of us that thought that there was an attempt to move a motion when you couldn't at that time. But if, it's, if the objective truly on Friday was just simply to read into the record, it's already been read into the record. And this is a on continuation that of that meeting. This meeting was, the meeting was suspended on Friday, not adjourned. We're in the same meeting. So I don't think you can read into the record twice. If the, if the true purpose of Mr. Hallen was to simply read the motion and to have the motion read into the record, it's been done that. So, the, the, you know, the, his, his, his assertion that he's simply reading into the record can't possibly be the case because it's already been done. 